Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including BoJack Horseman, which we'll be getting into today. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Alex Bonilla. Hola. And Sam Quattro. Hello. Today, Alex, Sam, and I are closing out our BoJack Horseman Season 4 coverage, talking about the Season 4 finale, What Time Is It Right Now?, we finally reached the end of our episode by episode BoJack coverage. If you missed any of it, uh, go to overlyanimated.com or search for Overly Animated BoJack Horseman Podcast for more. You can find all of our, uh, I guess, previous 10. We doubled up once. So this will be our 11th BoJack Season 4 pod. Um, and we're talking the finale. Spoilers for the entire season, finally. And we'll get into a little bit of the season as a whole at the end relative to other BoJack seasons, um, but potentially uh, at some point in the future, a season four wrap-up pod. Um, but mostly we're talking the finale. Uh, let's Thank God. Now I don't have to pretend that I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, you can talk about, I mean, I don't know what you were holding back on from this episode, but you know, we'll get into Holly Hawk dies at the end. Yeah, she's yeah. Yeah, rip. But RIP. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alex, what are your thoughts on this finale? Um, it was sweet. Uh, um, like Bojack Horseman, it's not an episode that I. Uh, it's not a show that po- positivity is always related to. But I feel like it ended on uh, on an on an interesting note. Like Bojack finally giving a smile at the end of a season. Like it made me feel fuzzy inside. And that was the main plot line we were we were intrigued by. And they also leave some plot threads that make me interested enough in season five especially the filbert thing seeing princess carolyn and bojack maybe uh, repair their relationship that will be an interesting thing to look at uh if 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 there's a weak point it's diana mr peanut butter but uh, we'll we'll get into that as we get into the episode but i think it's a it's a solid one and uh, just a, a, a nice way to end the, the season a nice way to end the season what a contrast for the show i would say um, especially this season. Sam, what are your thoughts on this finale? Honestly, I think every Bojack finale is pretty weak. And this one might be the weakest, apart from season two. I don't know. It was just... So, in terms of Bojack's plotline, I think it ended like pretty much the happiest any season has ended. You know, well, he he has Luke like, work, and, oh, Holly the Hawk is his daughter, and like that's a bummer, but she, like, they're like siblings or half siblings so yay smile happy whatever i don't know it just felt like too much of like tying up loose ends for this season and it felt just like blah blah it didn't really feel that substantial which i guess in comparison to the previous episode you know not much will so i don't know i I think it was pretty subpar subpar wow yeah uh, yeah I, even even though the song at the end is like one of my favorite songs okay yeah i mean yeah, yeah that's definitely a highlight the yeah i think the ending of of the episode is good um i thought that was really it was really sweet the hollyhock and bojack call i really enjoyed that um and it's it's a solid episode all around but other than the ending nothing really stood out to me um i definitely think this is the worst finale of the show on my rankings it's it's pretty far below the other finales um which what even happened in the season two finale i mean i don't remember yes yeah, season two finale is the worst the I, I actually i think i had that ranked above three but regardless i really? think this is um this is this is the worst it's not i don't think that really matters uh the finale rankings but just i think this episode is somewhat indicative of the season as a whole um i wasn't super into a lot of the plot threads that were happening apart from the beatrice stuff which we got into in episodes two and eleven um you know there's there's a lot of uh, solid kind of takeaways here, some solid lines that are kind of indicative of larger, uh, you know, uh, life things, much like the show is is one to do. But, um, you know, I don't know, just just nothing really stands out to be looking back on it other than the ending of the episode. What do you what do you think about that, Alex? You are there other uh, do you agree that the end is a highlight and um, what other do you have any other highlights other than that? For sure, the the ending I think is the uh, is the climax of the episode and the, like the the peak uh, of it. Uh, I th- I like the plotline as a whole. Like I I also was interested by the tension in uh, Bojack getting to the Man- Manheim Manheim house and having that whole exchange go down. Like that that part was also interesting. 
um and princess carolyn like uh, i don't know i i enjoyed her showing here and like her bearing her soul to, to bojack at the end there but like in a very laid back style it, it it fits their chemistry pretty well and even like uh, uh, this might be heresy but I, the todd with yolanda plot line was interesting enough to me <laughs> like it just and seeing especially the ending is uh, obviously i think that's what we're going to talk about the most but just that part was mostly entertaining too. So I, I, I'm probably higher on this episode than you guys. But I, I found it pretty entertaining from from beginning to end, even if it wasn't a, a special uh, compared uh, compared to the standards that we usually put BoJack Horseman at. Well, uh, yeah, I, I disagree on the Todd plotline. I guess I think that was the worst for me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, see that like for me, I, I don't know, but Diane Peanut Butter like it, that that plotline has felt very mangled throughout this entire season, and I think like here it just it ends so abruptly, and the the lead up to it is very feels very messy. So like just that plotline, I just can't can't get invested in it. At least with Todd and Yolanda, they're they're funnier uh, uh, to me. And like the ending help helps it along a little bit. So in that sense, I prefer them to what, whatever happened between Peanut Butter and uh, Diane. Yeah, it had a, it had a better ending. Um, that was I think the highlight of that storyline with Todd. Uh, I mean, at least we got rid of the fucking clown, Dennis. Jesus Christ! Yes, th- that that also helped my <laughs> my analysis of this. I mean, there is this was a heavily clown dentisted <laughs> episode uh, plot line. So if if you didn't like the clown tennis, I feel like uh, Sam, you probably weren't crazy about the Todd plot here. No, like no, not at all. I mean, Todd is so stupid. I mean, oh my god. Well, yeah, that's his character. I know, but like, <laughs> you're gonna like rabies clown tennis. You're gonna try to I don't whatever. Todd just off into the woods. Who knew what this would could happen? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I would think that like. Yeah. People like Dennis at least would like be savvy enough to know what rabies is and like try to avoid wild animals like that, or try to find like a different place to live. Sam, are you questioning the logic of clown yes! Dennis getting rabies <laughs> in the forest? Yes, I mean Dennis make bank. Why couldn't they have just bought a house? They weren't on employment. Mm-hmm. By why Todd were they? Anymore. Why were they tied up in Todd's business at all? Like, uh, could, didn't they know I this was know. a terrible idea? Okay, apparently not. The whole this whole clown Dennis spotline is is like a take on either one to two years ago those like clowns in the forest, like right, like that's like the inspiration yeah, when, slash parody of twenty sixteen when like clown just happened. Yeah, when there's like these these like yeah that was like a news story, but like I don't and care. Now we have- and now it's completely irrelevant. I don't know. It's not irrelevant because it's out right now. I so. guess maybe I don't know. If, I don't think they timed that, but it's yeah. It, this yeah, is a, this. Is, I feel like this is a classic uh, case of animation doing a take on something that's out of uh, that's like an irrelevant reference by the time. No, the episode Dylan. Made. Here's what they did: they delayed the season so that the line up with they the release of it. it. Okay, yeah, for it so that it would be relevant again. Uh, Bingo! That, yeah, exactly what they did. That's why the season was really so late. Yeah. Um, the yeah so that that fly never really worked for me and also the uh the ending i think um it's a nice to continue the todd asexuality exploration here um i think that this is like a weaker use of um this characterization for todd than we'd had the rest of the season it's like a nice point to end it like uh todd uh can t- can potentially explore romance um we don't really get into it it's just left as a as a hanging thread like uh he's, like he's maybe he's not um aromantic as well like uh this is the type of thing that the show got into a little bit uh before um but to me it just it just it didn't pop as much as the previous todd asexual stuff in the season fair enough yeah. Um and then the print the 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 uh Mr. Peanut Butter Diane stuff uh, very much felt like a rehashing of their characters from the past three seasons. Just like kind it of condensed like into con- one episode. It, sorry, it felt like the conflict from season two. I mean I like yeah, I don't when, really remember specifics, but it does feel very familiar, yeah. Like when they have that big fight about like her birthday party and how she didn't want a big, yeah, big yeah, birthday party. Yeah, we've done the surprise thing, yeah. Yeah, it it felt like that before and like well, they just got married way too quick, and it's all Bojack's fault. It's all Bojack's fault, <laughs> as it, yeah, as everything in the show. Yeah, <laughs> in season one, I think like I don't remember specifically what happened, but basically they like push up their wedding to like you know one week as opposed to like one year. So, eh. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what do you think of that? Uh, that this, uh, Alex, what do you think that the, uh, the Mr. Peanut Butter or Diane stuff is just a rehashing of previous of their relationship? I'd say so because the, like the way I interpreted it is just like a culmination of their entire relationship. But the problem is that they fit all of this in this one episode. But in the like when I think about them in the rest of the season, the only thing that really sticks out is the commenced fracking, and the, all that was was just them delaying the inevitable with uh, with anger, angry sets. But like other than that, they ha- like I feel like the season hasn't done enough to warrant making this like your 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 b plot of your finale like it just it doesn't feel like it's done enough and uh, like the the ending speech is yeah, interesting, yeah let's, talk, let's talk about but... the ending yeah um yeah. also i like angry sex there yeah the, i hate sex yeah uh, um no. but uh the the uh, dylan said he likes angry sex yeah, I like, yeah I like, that on the record peanut butter having angry sex out of, no out of quote yeah context quotes yeah um <laughs> add this to the soundboard it's th- i think that this is justified rehashing their previous relationship problems if this is meant to be an ending for uh mr peanut butter and diane's relationship which i think it might but the be the problem is it doesn't feel like it. Like it just it feels like that, a that's fight my question. That... Why not do something substantial in your finale here? Like why not have um Todd and Yolanda like actually try going on a date instead of saving that for next season? Why not actually have Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane divorce here instead of us like spending half of next season on that? That seems inevitably where we're going. Yeah, and, and it's just it's left so ambiguous because like it, at least to me, like the fi- the final line of like the magic eye poster and everything, like I don't really get the full emotional effect of that because I don't. Uh, well, like let's it, talk the about me- it. So, the meta- yeah, the metaphor just feels a little right, well, too. I don't understand the metaphor, off. but um, he's, yeah. Diane says it's like the magic eye poster, blah, blah blah. You like whatever, see it, and I, she, you have to squint to like see the full picture come together. And she says, "I'm so tired of squinting." I can't even see those posters, so like that doesn't that that's lost on me. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I don't I can't even envision one, but um, the, the I feel like the metaphor obviously is like uh, they have a flawed relationship, and yeah, they have the, to take the a certain level... yeah, they have to take a certain look at it in order for it to work. And Dan just is tired of trying to make it work when it just doesn't nearly work. Yeah, th- that would be the surface level interpretation, right? That like she's she's happy in the few moments where like they see eye to eye, but the problem is they have such different perspectives and all. But the thing is, that's been a part of their relationship, and like, if they haven't got, if if they've already dealt with this, like for it feels like years by now, then why is this the breaking point? I think it's more like Diane just coming to a realization that, um, like we, I've been through this with Mr. Peanut Butter, like it didn't. He didn't learn. He's still the same person. I'm still not happy with who he is. Um, like, this is just a, a, a rehashing of our entire relationship in one day. And it's just remi- it's just really put it all. It's like, yeah, I just I just don't want to do this anymore. Like, why end on the I'm so tired of squinting line unless this is like Diane saying I'm done. Like, that's my interpretation. Diane's done. What's yeah. That? Like, uh, what do you think? Do you just, think they're are we are? Do you, what do you think of that, Sam? Do you think they're getting they're, they're getting divorced next season? In my heart of hearts, that's what I hope is going to happen. Because I just they're just not. I don't know because it just feels like they sort of drag each other's plots down and they drag each other down, and it's like Diane said. I just don't understand how they work, especially considering. You know, it's been, like, a couple years now since they've gotten married, and this shit's still happening. So, like, you know, it wouldn't be the first time somebody got divorced after a couple years. wouldn't be the last. It sucks that, like, you know, we spent all that time on them just to, like, start to rehash it and just have this. Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be a larger point about uh, relationships in in our society. Um, It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's like the, it's supposed to, we're supposed to repeat it. It's supposed to be about a failed relationship. Like it's supposed to be indicative of of larger failed relationships. Well, Well, I hope Diane is happy in the future. Yeah, I I hope that as well. But also I think, I think a problem with this show is that it hasn't really done enough for, for me to like see Mr. Peanut Butter as equally responsible for this because other than Mr. Peanut Butter like uh, making the surprises like I, I don't feel I, I don't feel that the show has done enough for me to like side like see both sides like as it's portrayed it feels just like Diane's very unappreciative 
like uh, if I go deeper, sure, I can make the uh, you can justify that Mr. Peanut Butter maybe doesn't pay attention to her emotions or her de- or her desires as much as he lets on. But at the same time, he he always has this nice veneer. He's the one who expresses his emotions more clearly when it comes to the, these discussions than Diane, who has to shroud her emotions in these metaphors. So just all in all, in all like uh, it's it's hard to. Uh, like sympathy, the show is making it a bit harder to sympathize when, with Diane that than I feel it would need to for me to be invested in this relationship. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of viewers had that perspective. I definitely have the opposite perspective on this, um, and I think that the show's show we're seeing this relationship through the lens of Diane. Um, at least that's how I view it. And um, I'm just so exhausted with uh, their marriage and with Mr. Peanut Butter, like as a husband. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, he's just I, to, from my. And pers- see, I li- I like Mr. Peanut Butter, so that must that's I think that's where the divide comes in. I, right? I mean, I also like Mr. Peanut Butter. But I'm not too big on him. I I don't you know I just I just see this through Diane's eyes, and he's just like so exhausting in in his uh in his in how he acts as a husband here and um it's like really what the fuck are you thinking of doing creating this this bell room for diane it's just such a stupid i do you you just don't know her at all you just can't conceptualize you could have just bought the dvd you can't conceptualize that she wouldn't like this it's so obvious like mr peanut butter just has seemingly no desire to like uh, accepts her like as who she is i mean he does he like accepts her but he's just he's just in it's just too uh incongruous with who he has, is as a person um like he's just there he's she's so different from him and he, he he just can't fundamentally get there and he like on the surface listens but he and he like on the surface makes efforts but he never really really tries to be on the same level with her because he's kind of trying to like bring her up to his what he views as like an acceptable level for their marriage um it's yeah i've just i've just never i i've always been on the diane perspective of the two of them and it's it's never you know and i don't really view it as his fault i guess i mean it's his fault in the same way that it's all men's fault in in society um but diane should just know that he's never gonna be a perfect match for him like it's just so obvious like he he's never gonna really get to the level that she needs on a relationship level it's pretty amazing that they even got together in the first place i mean yeah i mean how did that happen yeah i guess it happened before the show started right (laughs) Um, well we got like a glimpse of it and a past episode at one point like she was working at starbucks and he was married to katrina and blah 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 and they like oh hi i'm a screenwriter i'm diane blah 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 whatever yeah but- and and the, their relationship for me is just so indicative of some of the show's biggest problems and we like we get it we get this word that i'd use to describe this in the episode um the, the, they're, they're just so heteronormative that couple <laughs> <laughs> and it's so exhausting to me like the whole point of their relationship is to exhibit heteronormative problems with with these couples and um like yeah you've been successful you've shown how depressingly uh you, how uh depressing it is and men and women can't really like uh be on a, a true level because of societal gender roles and stuff and like it's just uh, i'm just i'm just very bored by them and i have been for a while Cool. Let's give Diane a girlfriend. That would. I mean, it, we could go there. I think that's. I think that's definitely a possibility. It's in, within the show's range. Um. I don't know. Yeah. And I, I mean, it's. I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, Speaking of heteronormative, Todd's thing sort of strikes me as that a little bit. What? What do you mean? Oh, uh, what's her name? With Yolanda. Yolanda. Oh, Yolanda. Yeah. Um, I mean, I definitely don't think that two asexual people dating would fall under the realm of heteronormative. I, not at all. That's like opposite the definition. Um, you know, it, I guess. Yeah, but... it's no, it it is. Yeah, it's it's not it's not you know it's not going to be uh, it's like they're not you know they're not um, you know straight people like they're um, you know two asexual people and it's 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 to me that's like much more interesting because uh, you know it's not it's not a typical thing we've seen and it's something that no other show on TV has explored is like. Um, getting into potential romantic feelings with uh people who identify as asexual and it's like todd exploring like is he um you know aromantic as well what what type of romantic is he um that's uh you know it wasn't it wasn't interesting in this present interestingly presented in this episode but i'd, I'd be much more into that plot line 
I'm more. I'm not trying to dig into the discourse, TM, but I'm more saying that the writers. Yeah, I'm trying to protect you from the discourse like, a little bit here, but yeah. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. But I'm just saying, like, to as far as we know, cisgendered, you know, asexual people, but you know, cisgendered, you know, cisgendered male, cisgendered female, potentially having a romantic relationship, like that's still. Like, yeah, you know, I the writers could have taken it a different way. They, I'm just they saying. could have. This is still indicative of real people, and these still are two queer people. So it's, um, you know, I, I, that's very refreshing from my eyes. Um, y- y- yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't go there. But anyway, um, what, Alex, what do you think of my characterization of, um, of Mr. Peanut Butter and Dan's relationship is just like exhausting and kind of repetitive? And it is all that on purpose, but I don't know. I feel, I, I feel done with it. What do you think? Well, like I, I was going into the season supporting the relationship. Like I, I, I've always sensed that there was something good, like good at the center of that relationship that it could be worked out. But this season has finally hammered into me. Like I guess going, joining the consensus that yeah, this relationship just isn't going to last. And like, and I guess that's maybe why that's um, why I'm frustrated with with the finale because like I don't uh, if I've if even I, as a person who was supporting this relationship for a while, have come to the realization that this should end, then why doesn't it end here? Like, uh, it it feel it's it, it makes me fear that we are that this is going to be the cycle of the show. Like in in place of a will they won't they, it's a will they won't they divorce. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, I'm, I don't I'm really just... get why you don't end it here. I mean, this episode kind of functions very much as a, de- a denouement. Like, uh, it's it's not really trying to have anything actually happen. I guess um it's it's very much mm. like the the falling the really falling action but i don't know why you do yeah. that. And by the, randomly back to something you said before i don't i don't uh agree at all with the um don't understand the uh can't sympathize with diane in the relationship when mr peanut butter like without her consent launched into a run for governor i think that's like the big thing uh, and i feel like i should have said that before but um uh, yeah no no but that that's true for sure but uh, like at the same time i just feel like because the the show has dedicated so it feels like little time to that that corner of, of the plot line like it focused more on the actual politics part of it than what diane felt at least in my opinion that it just it, it doesn't it didn't stick with me that that argument but if you just consider the relationship as a whole like the the compilation of all the times that mr peanut butter has ignored diane's wants then there you can you can make i mean yeah I, th- I think that also better. also i think that single action is like uh is just awful like i think that was just it was it, like that wasn't given its proper due and how terrible that was of mr peanut butter it's just you don't do that yeah i i agree there it, it wasn't given the the right attention but yeah it is weird how diane is like fine with that but um I don't know. it's they work through it but then it's like even when you work through that there'll always be another thing i guess that's what this episode's saying right like um like we got through the previous problem, but it's he'll it's always just another thing, and don't they won't she won't be truly be happy with him. Is there any hope yeah. for them? Like it, because they no. didn't end it here, like could they continue to explore the them trying to repair their their, their relationship? I think that's the way the show's going. That they're gonna like keep trying to fix this, and then they keep getting frustrated, and like it, it just at this point it it does feel like the cycle of like trying to repair, and you realize that there, there's another hole in the relationship maybe you fix that hole and then something else opens up and it, it just feels like it's going to be rocky all the way through yeah um I, yeah i don't know i don't i don't know i don't maybe doing. somebody will like have an affair and they'll be like uh or i i'm pretty interested it's i'm interested to see if they do get a divorce what it would do to mr peanut butter because what he's been divorced what two times now so, you know, third time, it's like, you know, what the fuck is wrong with me? Why am I like this? Blah, blah, blah. Maybe a spiral downward for Mr. Peanut Butter. That's that's everything we deserve, right? Um, I guess mm-hmm. I, we've, we kind of got like one Mr. Peanut Butter depressed uh, plot thread last season. That'd be. Well, yeah. we can have another one. Yeah. And I, I think that that was like a lone bright spot in that dialogue was like him admitting like I'm doing this because I don't want you to feel like a guest. Like I, I'm afraid of, of, of losing you or what's going to happen to me if I lose another another wife. Mm-hmm. Like that—that that was an interesting point of dialogue in the middle of that. Yeah, he says, uh, "Yeah, I, you seem like a guest in in our own home." And unlike the candle in the aforementioned Disney film, I don't want that. Which I thought—I think that was the best line of the episode for me. Um, <laughs> but also, just because we're an animation podcast, so I appreciate all the Beauty and the Beast references in, in this episode. That was nice. I guess. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, that would be interesting from Mr. Peanut Butter's perspective, also potentially from Diane's perspective. Uh, Sam, have, uh, have you, what do you think of potentially exp- uh, in the future of the show exploring Diane and Bojack? I feel like you've expressed that before. Yeah, I mean, okay, I don't want to be like, oh, I ship them because I, I think don't I'm saying like- that's your OTP, Sam. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know. I think it would be nice to see them together. I I like them together as characters, like not like romantically or maybe romantically. I don't know. I just they gel well together, and I think couldn't that be where that the, couldn't that be where the show's going? Watch. Like we've we've like didn't put them together in the beginning, and then we spent all this time, and now uh, finally um diane and mr peanut butter break up like that if it's sort of like a traditional show that would be where it's going uh also another possibility i want to bring up bojack princess carolyn again like bojack slightly improved and princess carolyn coming off of a particularly bad breakup and now they're going to work together closely i i feel like that's another very possible direction the show could take yeah that'd be another what might happen uh, Bojack and Diane might just like have sex once, and I'm very, I'm very a- anti Bojack Diane, and very anti Bojack yeah, yeah. Princess Caroline. Like I would, re- you just don't want Bojack with anybody. No, he's <laughs> just terribly destructive. I don't want he's him. With these, yeah, I don't yeah. want him with those two people. Like, no, thank you. Yeah, yeah he'll just die alone, like he should. <laughs> So wait, so like uh, speaking of this, like, do we feel that Bojack's improved in any way in this season? Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay. I don't yeah, know. The, the way you were talking about it is like No, whoa. I mean I, I'll never forgive him for last season, but um it's, uh, you know. Okay. Oh my god, Dylan. <laughs> I'm, yeah, uh, too much god, too much of like, too much of a Sarah Lynn get a stand. gun and shoot Sarah Lynn. No, he did. Um yeah. No, he never, did not. Never will be forgiven. We got we saw Sarah Lynn briefly in this episode in the beginning. Uh it was great. Um anyway, in the in the uh, horse and round. Uh but uh yeah, so I I do think Bojack has been is a, a slightly better person. Like I think he's been dealing with just uh, I think this is probably the darkest period of his life, and he's been dealing with um his past and uh, these terrible things that he's doing. And I think his experiences with Hollyhock are changing him for the better. I do. Okay, good because I I think that's the feeling they wanted you to come off with, like with the smile and all. I want I want it was interested to see if there was a, a dissenting opinion on that, but uh, yeah, like I I feel nice knowing that at least Bojack like went actually made all this effort for once, like in trying to find out. I think yeah, I think uh, with Hollyhock's the, I, birth and all. Yeah, I think maybe the smile is less. Is he a better person? More is he potentially happy at all now? Um, like I think it's less of a moral in in in. in you know, judgment on him. Um, and maybe like, maybe Happy Bojack could make you a better person. Yeah, I think so. Um, but maybe Bojack is slightly on his way towards becoming something akin to happy is what the end of the season is saying. What do you, that's another way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of that, Sam? Hashtag maybe. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, I we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. He'll probably spiral down again. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Princess Caroline uh, in this episode. Ka- Carolyn! <laughs> Dylan! Oh my god! Yeah, Prin- She's just, he's just doing it on purpose. Princess, yeah. Prin- Princess, Cor- an yeah. Princess Coraline is, uh, is pitching the show to <laughs> <laughs> what time is it right now dot com with, um, oh, I forgot god. this guy's name, Stuart, right? Um, Rami, Rami Malik. Yeah, Rami Malik. Uh, no, yeah, Stuart is her bad, uh, uh, bad assistant. Oh, Stuart's the assistant? Yeah, uh, who's yeah. the guy? What's his name? What's Rami Malek's name? In this, I don't even know. Something uh, weird. We'll we'll look it up as we as we continue. But um, yeah, I it like I'd marathon the season, and now we're finally getting back to the end. And I just don't remember this character. But um, yeah, I mean, it is basically Rami Malek, Fli- right? Flip, it is flip, weird, weird, flip, weird actor, Flip guy. McVicker. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Something weird. Okay, yeah, uh, Mr. Robot coming back soon, by the way. But um, <laughs> there's uh, he's yeah, they're pitching it to whatimesrightnow.com. They have the whole thing with like newts. Um, and uh, I don't know. And yeah, that's the show's happening. That's next season. This is classic. This show is like we had uh, going into what season two, the shooting of um, of Secretariat, and now we're going to go into the shooting of I guess going into this season or last season is the shooting of um. <laughs> Of uh, the middle name Hitler, guy, uh, guy, uh, the guy's kid from the show's show. Did that ever? Horsing around. Yeah. What, what was? Yeah, we we abandoned that. Yeah. What? When did? Why didn't that come together? What was? What was with that? 
was, was that this season? Oh, the around? Yeah. No, yeah, it was last season's finale. Okay, yeah, that that seemed to be where we we're going. This yeah, season, what happened with that? Is he dead? <laughs> I, I don't even remember. Why did why did why did we just completely forget that? What happened? Yeah. Maybe he'll come back in season five with a with a murderous vengeance, wanting to kill yeah, Bojack yeah. for a bit. And that's how the killing. show ends. I'm off. I'm off, Ethan. We don't need to see more. But yeah, we're gonna go going into the filming of Philbert next season, I guess. But um, yeah, we we've been pitching that, and then Princess Carolyn um and uh, Bojack, they like uh you know he like agrees to do it, and she's like um yeah I don't know she's like we're trying to recover from her life falling apart or whatever. Basically, is the is uh aren't we all yeah and then um what makes you special princess carolyn it's really hard to need people yeah she says that yeah it's hard to hard to need people and then also bojack says she'd be a good mother um and that's kind of like the ending of of her storyline here what do you think alex of her story this season and where we leave her like uh, as a whole i'm i I think as with uh, the other b plots it wasn't as well paced as i expected but I think I enjoy, I enjoyed it seeing Princess Car well not enjoyed Princess Carolyn see is seeing her spiral into a, a death uh, into a pit of sadness. But uh, I I enjoyed just seeing how like her focus on like career, but also on a family. But uh, be- because she wasn't able to contr- to control her her emotions at the time when it was necessary, and just like went back into her self defense mode, she ended up ruining things. But then, it, like at least in this final final episode, we see that she is uh, more forthcoming, and uh, it it, wor- it works out for her. Fortunately, with Bojack uh, accepting, and it'll just I, I don't think we've seen enough to see how she, like how she re- rebounds from this. Like, is she going to go back as hard as she did into into her work as we've seen her in past seasons? But uh, I'm I'm interested uh, I'm interested to see. But I, I think this finale like. It only serves the purpose of setup. It doesn't really do much to wrap up her her plotline in any way. What do you think of uh, PC in this episode, Sam? In this episode or in this season? Ah, uh, well, you can do both here. I think season wide, I think it's probably the most interesting she's been. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think last season, like we were starting to see, you know, sort of the cracks and like the little things about her that you know kind of suck and are kind of bad and you know just are terrible which you know i like i like i like flawed characters a lot um anyway with that in mind uh this season her like cool spiral down and you know drinking and breaking up with ralph and just you know having this hope for something greater and just having it fucking dash and like you know taking her her whole life down with it I thought that was really great <laughs> from a storytelling perspective anyway. It, terrible for her and like I feel really bad but you know what is good television what is good what are good stories if they're not relatable to our own lives, right? So in that, you know, I think this is probably the best that Princess Carolyn has been when she's at her worst narratively. Yeah, uh, I I, th- I, th- I do I do think it was interesting to see like this th- the the quick setup of like a further life that she had uh, with Mouse Guy and stuff uh, fall apart so much. I think that was interesting. Um, I, I his name is Ralph. Give him respect. Yeah, he's gone. He's Ralph, gone from Dylan. my mind now. He's <laughs> God. It's uh, you. You two are so much alike, Dylan. How could you forget me and Ralph? Yeah. Oh. That's bad. Um, you're, you're a mouse. You're a mouse man. Yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah. What's your Bojack Sona, Sam? Which, uh, <laughs> which... my first Sona? You mean? No, stop. Uh, nope. <laughs> nope. Um... <laughs> I don't know what my Bojack Sona yeah. is. Uh, what if I choose Hollyhock? Yeah, I, I identify as Hollyhock. Yeah, in the show, I agree. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I, I've just. I just. This is another example of another. Uh, kind of heteronormative plotline in the show that I'm just pretty uninterested in, which is Princess Carolyn's um, just wanting to be a mother and everyone being like, you'd be a good mother. Um, and I don't know. Yeah. Give her a life partner and then let them adopt a little kid 
from a foreign country. Yeah, this is whenever I say something is a pro, it's boring because it's heteronormative. Sam's suggestion is <laughs> give give uh, give her a girlfriend. Yeah, I agree. That's all. Make it <laughs> opposite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just I don't. I just I just don't connect with this for Princess Caroline and wanting a kid. And I wow, Dylan, you don't want to be a mother. I mean, I understand the spine isn't for me, right? Like I'm not. I mean, it isn't for me either. I don't want kids. You know, I just it's I guess I understand this is going to be a relatable motivation for for a lot of people and even these heteronormative stuff or uh, plot lines or things a lot of people are going to connect to um it's just i feel like i've seen this with other smart with other less smart shows and they've done this plot line and you know i don't know i don't know why i need to see this for such a this be like the the sole motivating factor and it's not the sole motivating factor but it's almost she's almost there's nothing else at this point like and this is her main the main motivation presented in this episode for princess caroline is is wanting wanting to be a mother i it's just it it's it, it's hard for me not to see it as reductive to her and and, I, and regardless well, i'm just bored with it what do you what do you think? fair enough and we, we can always return to the whole princess carolyn just being a hard, a hard worker delaying the, her her wishes for a family to the point where it just becomes unattainable we, we can always go back to that too and i feel like that is it's, it's left ambiguous to the point where that could easily be the situation where despite all this praise princess carolyn's like I, i've decided it's not for me anymore maybe she'll become a social worker that'd be interesting um yeah, I could, I could see, I could like that, but yeah, it just seems like we're going with like Bojack suggesting adopting after um, his. Maybe we get into that with her plot, which I guess would be fine. Um, and I realize I'm trying to like push onto her like feminist ideals, um, or like, uh, uh, and it's and it's and it's and it, feminism also applies to her this situation of her wanting to you know to have children, and that's like also it's it's fine and stuff. I'm just I don't know. It just it feels like something I've seen I see from from middle-aged female characters on every sitcom and i don't know why yeah. I, why why bojack's doing it you know i mean in in terms of like the real world it is a sort of like a double-edged sword because you know a lot of feminists think that you know having kids or like wanting kids is reductive and having a family or wanting that is like plenty of people plenty of people who are feminists that still do that and they still <clears throat> sort of adhere to the, you know, quote unquote heteronormative lifestyle while still holding on to the views. Which is which is valid, right? And this isn't to say Princess yeah. Carolyn can't be, yeah, you know. It's th- th- this course is ruining everybody. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, you know, regardless of any of that discourse stuff, um, you know, I'd I'd like to see us go with the interesting direction of Princess Carolyn's character. What do you think, Alex? Yeah, like I just uh I agree with you that we're getting to a point in the show where it, it's it feels like we're like with Diana and Mr. Peanut Butter, right? Where we're, we realized that we're starting to re- recycle themes. And I think with Princess Carolyn, like this season did a good job of treading new water, but I think we're getting close to the point where we could begin recycling with her. Like if we go back to the whole wor- uh, work is my life, that'll be a repeat of seasons one and two. And if we go through the whole adoption thing, then we'll be through. The, then we'll repeat the family is what I what is most important to me right now that we've covered this season. So, uh, but at the same time, I can't really think of a, an entirely new wrench that you can throw into Princess Caroline's character at this point to keep her interesting in that sense. She'll become an alcoholic. Uh-huh. I feel. I thought you were going to say. But, but, I thought you were going to bring up the girlfriend again, Sam. Like, uh, I mean. I guess. Well, but... hey, but Bo- Bojack gets better. Princess Carolyn gets worse. Sure. Princess. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that would be, that's an interesting direction to take. A Princess Carolyn x Diane Sam. Hmm. I don't know about mm-hmm. that. They, they, they're too. Uh, no. That would solve no. both problems you've oh. expressed, right? Like this is. Yeah. Well, when I mean, when they was... work when they work together, that w- that wasn't the best chemistry. <laughs> their yeah, their scenes no. together didn't really stand out. Wouldn't that, I don't know. That, that I, would be kind of be Korosamiing it, right? With the uh, with the uh, with with uh, Bojack being Mako, like it kind of. God, do I have to write Legend like OCs yeah. for okay. like Diane, Princess Caroline, well, uh, yeah. like their OC girlfriend? Yeah, is, is Mr. Peanut Butter Bolin? Yeah, I think yes, yes. I think that fits very well. These are Legend of Korra references, by the way. Um, last uh, Bojack, we talked a lot about it already, but um, it seems like next season he's doing the Philbert. He agrees to do a Philbert show. He says, "I'll see you on set, to Princess Caroline." They have their talk, um, and then with Hollyhock at the end, um, he you know he goes through the whole thing, finds, goes to the dads, gives the. 
gives the number and then has this call. He gets a Facebook. Yeah, he gets a Facebook. Like, God damn, what more do you want from this man? We had another uh, another use of their uh, interesting animation style of like for, of animating Bojack's uh, story of what he of like a montage. I, I is that not the same style as making fiends? It does. It does look like we're ma- not making fiends. Uh, something making like that. fiends is uh, the show that um, that Amy Winfrey did, who's the director on the show. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I agree with that. Um, but I, 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 again, I don't like that, uh, that style for the show. And I don't know. I never, I never. Wow. Dylan, I liked it a lot. I never like the animating the uh, story thing. Um, also like, isn't that just what Bojack is? Well, Why do we need to, you know, well, isn't that, is it just well, I, I think in, I think in the both episodes it's been used, it's more like to help the tone of the story, which is at least in the other episode, it was like him, his mind racing to, to like going around in circles and in, in his thoughts. Mm-hmm. And here it's more like him going all around town, like trying to figure out what to do and all. So I think like this, at least here, I think the style works because it helps with the tone of the story that he's telling. Like it was fine. Um, you know. Yeah, but I think it improved. Okay. Uh, I mean, we don't really know what it would have been otherwise. Uh, I guess just a shot of him telling. It was just a minute. Just, just like a Family Guy sort of segue. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and then he he calls he calls uh, Hollyhock, and they say uh, Hollyhock says, um, uh, "Never wanted you to be a dad, uh, but uh, but I've never had a brother." And she she's Aww. going to see Henrietta, Aww. and yeah. And wow. they bond over their hatred of Honeydew and Jared Leto. Yeah. Uh, let yeah, Sam Sam, those. what are your thoughts on Thanks. Honeydew? Fuck that! I hate how you do, Alex. Three for three. No, I what? I didn't. You putting words in my mouth. Oh, oh, I, well, I mean, well, including Bojack. Oh, okay, I'm I'm fine with Honeydew. I don't get this uh, this fruit cup uh, Honeydew it discrimination. Sucks. No, I'm, it's fine. It's fine. Um, the, you need the Honeydew. Cantaloupe is so much better. They're both fine. They're watermelon. No. They're both fine. Uh, I don't. Watermelon is barely a thing. You mean it's? What, it's, 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 it's elaborate. It's water. Melon. It, yeah, but at least it has more substance than okay, Honeydew. Anyway. Um, I, 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 it, it, did this show fun. make fun of Honeydew before? Or is that a different show? Like, yes, it, it, it's been a okay. thing. Yeah, it is. A, yeah, I like the Jared Leto thing now. Um, yeah, Jared Leto. You know that guy. He went to my alma mater and then he dropped out. And I would make jokes about, oh, he's going to talk at our uh, commencement ceremony. And then he did Suicide Squad, and I was like, nope, bye. Nope, bye, okay. There's Sam's assessment. Oscar winner, Jared yeah, Leto. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, he did win an Oscar, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Um, Too bad he's an Oscar. Yep, so the I like the scene at the end with Holly Ock and Bojack, and um, yeah, I, I, I like going in, I like this as a conclusion to them, this being like, oh, we're we're just siblings. Like, I, I think it really works for the buildup that we saw. Oh, that's so cute. Brother and sister. Yeah. Yeah, and also like Hollyhock recognizing, like, yeah, it was probably a bad idea, but uh, like, I don't hate you, and, and like, the, the, like that. That's better than, than the previous relationships we've seen of both. Yeah, it's so a very healthy way. It, of it, feel, it, yeah. it feels like an improvement. Yeah. <laughs> God love Hollyhock. I hope she comes back. Yeah, I think definitely someday. I mean, I think she'll be a main character next season. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. She's uh, like. Like I guess story wise, it maybe doesn't work, but clearly, I think this is not a character being written out in at the end of the show here, at the end of the season. She's gonna go to like, UCLA and then she's gonna like confront that one douchebag Miles, I think his name yeah. was. Whatever that. Yeah, that's true. She could just was. go to college in California. Yeah. Yeah, and like crash with Bojack again, and not overdose on diet pills. Yeah. Break away from her fathers. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like seeing all the fathers again there. Um, but. No. Why? There's too many. <laughs> yes, <laughs> kind of the joke. Yeah. Okay. So- oh, that's, that's, that's like such a shitty joke. Like, oh, it's eight people, eight eight gay guys, and like a polyamorous relationship. I mean, it's like it's a simplistic mm-hmm. joke, but um, you know, I I like I liked uh, that it, just the show bringing up anything polyamorous and like going through with it and like uh, actually- yeah, but eight people. It's an exaggerated, yeah. It's it's a. It's I know, but nobody who is poly is in an eight person relationship. I'm sure there are, but you're right. It's comment in the comments if you are. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure we'll get a comment about that. But it's it's yeah, it's kind of an exaggerated for effect, and it it's a little bit reductive and to that to that extent that it's almost like making fun of it. But I, I think it like takes it seriously. Um, so I'm fine with how it's presented. Um, Alex, anything else from this episode that we haven't talked about? Um. I think we've oh, oh just uh, when they were 
going through um, what Beatrice left behind in her boxes, um, there was a quick look at, at the fact that Butterscotch's book had been published in the end. So I found that as an interesting... We're going to uh, make a movie out of it. Yeah, like it, it, feel, it feels like that could very well be a plot point mm. in either next season or season six, like the fact that that book is out there. And the fact that we, we haven't, even as we focus so much on Beatrice, we only got that one flashback of his of his father. and We've seen like little bits and pieces, but I feel like he's the next part of Bojack's past we need to go into. I don't know. Do we need to see Butterscotch? Like he's an asshole. I get it. Yeah, I, I feel like there's something to be done there. Yeah, so I'm like, like, the, like, like the parallels in him being a failed writer, Bojack for a long time being a, like in his eyes a failed actor, and uh, their their struggles artistically speaking. Like there, there there's something there. Yeah, I, it seems like the show could go into that. Um, so yeah, other things from the episode. Uh, one, we finally saw the bridge to Hawaii. Yeah, that paid off. Yeah, that that was yeah it paid off like such a fucking dumb idea. How many miles is that? An, an unrealistic, an unrealistic. And was amount. it like a two lane highway? Yeah. Like it, what, what was it? <laughs> is it uh, I mean, that's how bridges. Are. Anyway, yeah, yeah, bridges. I I feel like the ta- uh, like at least the Tappan Z up in New York is like four lanes. Yeah, the major bridges like more than that. Yeah. Hashtag yeah. bridges. Uh, number two, I did want to say the name of the song at the end of the episode because I mentioned it earlier, but I didn't say the name. Uh, Wake Up by Jenny Owen Youngs. Yeah. Good song, great album, great artist. She also has a podcast, but we're not advertising that here. <laughs> it is a good song. I think it works well, yeah, with, in the context, in like the, the, uh, the tone of the ending, yeah. Also, she's gay. Nice. Thumbs up. Guess who else is gay? Tegan and Sarah, and their song was in the finale of the first season. Yeah. Guess who else is gay? Courtney Barnett. Her song was in the finale of the second season. Nina Simone. I don't know. <laughs> oh, is that the third <laughs> season? But, yeah. Okay. I'll look I, I feel like she's a gay icon, but not yeah. gay. Like, but so far, we're, yeah. we're getting the gay vibes. <laughs> is that is that intentional? Is that intentional by the show? I don't know. If, I I don't know if it's intentional. I'm, that, this is all Dude, sung by Sam. Women this too, is so I'm telling you, this is elaborate foreshadowing for the Diane Princess Carolyn relationship. <laughs> right. They would not work at all, dude. Does any no nobody on the show works? You can still explore it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, that's what. What about the Mister Peanut Butter Todd ship? Uh, that that can begin sailing yeah, after the divorce, I, I right? Think that could work. Yeah, sure, I yeah, like that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, I mean, they're obviously destructive when together, but <laughs> and they, and they need someone of with some modicum of intelligence to babysit. But you know, well, good. They can have a poly relationship with that. Um, what do you call it, Kevin guy? <laughs> oh no! Yeah, he, he's the voice of reason. Then. But uh, that's someone probably ships that anyway. So that's for what what time is it right now? Uh, overall, season four of BoJack. Um, Alex, a lot. This has been season has been getting a lot of praise. Um, is this the best season of BoJack? No, I, I I still want to put season three uh, at the top. I, I think this has a case for second best season, but I, I think I just prefer season three how it handled uh, BoJack's descent uh, as well as uh, um, like the whole Sarah. I, I think Sarah Lynn episode like that that gives it a very big boost, and uh, just all in all, I, I think a, a season three was more consistent. Season four was really good, though, and I think it, you can make an argument that it had higher highs, maybe, besides the Sarah Lynn episode. And, uh, yeah, so it, it doesn't stand out as the best, but uh, it was a really, really good season of BoJack. Sam, best season of BoJack? No. Okay, why? What And, and what I is? To... I don't know. I go back and forth between season three and season two, because season two has, like, a lot of really, like, big points for me that like I really felt but I think I agree with Alex season three is definitely more consistent and just has just more tight stuff going on and it's more concise and it doesn't really lag and it doesn't really have bad episodes as far as season four goes on the whole I think it's probably the third out of four seasons season one being you know the worst Um, but I think, you know, part by part, there are good episodes and like the good episodes are like amazing and they're probably the best of the show, but the bad episodes are like, little bad. 
bad yeah. slash mediocre. Yeah, I do want to highlight like the the Beatrice episodes, like those two together. Th- those those are both like top five episodes for me, and I think like that's by far the highlight of the season, and the only way it makes it in- into the second best season of the show. Well, like if you if you removed the Beatrice plotline from this season, that there's there's a good chance it, it it would be bottom. I feel. Yeah, like there are so many elements. Like I love Hollyhock. I love the Beatrice stuff. You know whatever there's so many elements of the season that i like but stuff like the governor no, i can't say the word the governor the race yeah. yes thank you the race for governor and you know bojack still being an asshole even after he left her year and plus like the whole like year time gap that they gave it and a lot of princess carolyn's stuff with ralph in the beginning of the season really dragged it down and it really made the season sort of like I said, it lagged and it just didn't feel good. It just felt boring and it felt like I was just watching it just to get to the next episode and like hope that something was better. Yeah, I don't know if I'd go. I don't know if I'd ever say that Bojack's not good. I think it's probably always good. Um, it's at least pleasant. Um, but I'm also on, of the opinion this is not the best season of Bojack. I think there are people that are saying that. Um, I don't want to say that's like a wrong opinion, but for me, um, season three achieved a level of consistency that the show had really lacked in seasons one and two. There'd always been great episodes, but then there'd just been a lot of kind of sitcom you know, whatever episodes. And then season three, it was mostly pretty great. And I think we're back to the, there's some great episodes, but there's also some whatever episodes in season four. Um, And there's no bad episodes here. I think see Mr. Mr. Peanut Butter Run ended up being ranked last. So that's good that we didn't like have anything worse than the premiere. Um, I I think this episode, the season has the best episode of the show, Time Zero. It also has Old old Sugarman Place, a top 10 episode. Um, Hooray Todd episodes, great. Thoughts and Prayers is great. Stupid Piece of Shit is great. Ruthie's great. Other than that, they're all kind of mediocre um the rest of the rest of these episodes so um you know overall season four is about the same as seasons one and two for me i i kind of i like yeah. season one more than most people so that's not that's not like a bad thing like they're all just kind of grouped together below season three for me um yeah and uh it's but the, yeah, obviously there's still these highlights in these these stand I, also i want to note that like stupid piece of shit and ruthie have incredible endings um but uh aren't consistent overall ep- consistently overall great episodes um i would agree with that yeah yeah like uh, i i really like stupid piece of shit and like that that for me is is a top 10 episode but uh i, I can see the argument like yeah like if if those episodes yeah i mean that's closer because they interweave the uh monologue throughout right um but and ruthie does too with its narrative device but if those were if those episodes were like top 10 episodes of the show then the season might be elevated but there's really nothing you know not much ap- apart from season episodes 2 and 11 but obviously there's still i mean the season's going to be remembered for the end of ruthie and the end of stupid piece of shit like uh, those are two just such standout moments and all of time's arrow and old mr old sugarman plays um he thoughts and prayers and Ray todd episode also have like uh very memorable moments as well so um there, there's still a lot of great stuff there even if overall it didn't amount to a level of consistency that of season three no one cares about fracking <laughs> yeah i hope we're done with fracking, also you know. I want to say, I think something that really took away from the season was that there wasn't really, so, okay, in season one, we had Diane writing the book. Season two, we had Bojack shooting Secretariat. Season three, we had the whole, like, Oscar bid. We didn't have any sort of cohesive tying device, other than the governor, the, the governor race, but that just fell apart yeah so, and, on, and on bojack's side all we had was hollyhock really yeah so it just felt like there wasn't too much connecting the season together yeah i mean obviously there were things and you know beatrice's stuff etc but in terms of like big outside world events you know, governor race etc there wasn't that much and what there was was b plot most of the time so like yeah Uh, Yeah, and I I don't think that that's like, I don't like miss a connecting plot there, but you're right, that is a possible symptom of why it might not have came together so well. Um, I do miss the connecting plot there. I can't wait for next season when we have one. Yeah, maybe it will be um, Filbert. Filbert, yep. Um, Alex, uh, even if it's still a great season of TV, even if it's not the best season of Bojack, but is this one of the best seasons of animation so far of the year? 
Um, well, all we have right now... A lot of shows aren't complete. Let me work through this. We have Rick, yeah. yeah, we have Rick and Morty Season 3. Uh, we have um, Steven Universe, I guess, just the... Of the, uh, of the, the episodes that have aired are. so far of our top-tier animated shows, you know. Uh, yeah, right. I'm, I'm just working through what has yeah. aired this year. <laughs> But um, yeah, like it, it, on a, on a whole, it, it's it's really good. I think Rick and Morty season three is on pace to surpass it. Gonna but, depend uh, on the last uh, episodes, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I I think Rick and Morty will end up being ahead of it. But but th- this was a, a really solid season of television. When you submit your ballot, your list of five uh, best animated shows that have aired this year, based on episodes that have aired this year for our end of year animated awards, will Bill Jack be on that uh-huh. list? It, it will be. It will be for sure. I, I probably number two, but it, it. I, if you allowed me to do one A and one B, I would do it. But I know you're against ties, no, yeah, so no ties. It, it would end. It would end up being two. I think. Yeah. Do you agree, Sam? That's still a great episode of TV that you've seen this season of TV that you've seen this year. I guess. Like season of TV or season of animation? Because I don't really watch. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why I asked TV in general. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I would think so. Yeah. yeah. Um. What else did I even watch this okay, year? Well, we don't need to, watch Glow. We don't need to go through all Glow of them. Glow was pretty we good. Go through all of them. Um, yeah, I think for me this is... <laughs> Riverdale really sucked, though. Okay. That's an inter- it's a weird compa- thing to compare to, but yeah. Well, that, was enough, that was the only other thing I could remember. Mr. Robot Vaccine, at least. But yeah, uh, it's, yeah I, I still think it's, it's great. It'll probably make my ballot for end of the year, although I'd put it behind Starverse right now. I think Star has had, um, you know, just a higher overall quality, but... You know, it's too very hard to compare shows. So whatever, it'll 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 make the top five. So, uh, yeah, um, that that that's it for our BoJack coverage for season four. We finally did it. Forever. No, we, we'll, we might have a season wrap up pod to get more into themes from the season overall. Episode ranking pod. I mean, yeah, sure. We we could. It's it's I that's it's it's somewhat less interesting to me this season just because we have clearly episodes that are somewhat special and then some of um you know some slightly lower episodes um I don't know it's like if you'd like to join our Patreon group you can see my full episode rankings yeah, I, <laughs> I, I might, yeah, I might up there too if you want to become a patron but um yeah that's that's we we we're finished our episode by episode for Bojack um thank you guys for those of you who've listened to all of listened to any thank you so much for. Um, singing with us let us know if you listen to all of our bojack episode recap pods or some of it or whatever in the comments that and uh we we've had a uh we have a 50 percent approval rating on itunes reviews so far so you can you can increase that with more with more iTunes yeah. reviews. um but yeah thank you to so much to alex who hosted half of these uh and the one all ones all in a row very difficult alex did a great job thanks to sam and michelle who were on a ton of these and andy and MP. steve as well and um, we we worked hard to get these all done in a quick time for a Netflix show. Still don't know the best format for your podcasting episode by episode on Netflix, but you know we did it for this, and um, it was hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you want to check more of our discussions on Rick and Morty and all these other animated shows we're talking about, go to overlyanimated.com. You can subscribe to our main feed or any other show specific feeds. Um, if you want to talk about BoJack as a whole and join the discussion, we have a Discord. You can. Um, chat with us on discord text chat at overlyanimated.com slash discord um and uh tell us why we're wrong about this not being the best season of bojack or tell us why we're right i don't know whatever um you can tell us who you want to see be gay uh tell us who you ship yeah what do you ship out of <laughs> yeah uh, tell us your yeah, ships. T- yeah t- please please uh, join i'm president of the diane pc fan club please join um <laughs> Oh my god! All right, <laughs> it's ha- it's happening next season. All right, okay, uh, go write a fanfic. About I I, gu- I would say I guarantee there's a fanfic, but I'm not that confident actually. Oh my god! I'll go on Archer of our. Of our I don't think right the BoJack now. section will be that robust in the fanfiction, so probably not. Yeah. But um, you can I'll support look. us via Patreon at patreoncom slash animated. Thanks to all of our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, Brendan, aka Kells, and thanks as always to our patron executive producers, John Ryan, Steve, Alex, and Andy. Um. Yeah, check out our continued Rick and Morty coverage, and uh, we got a bunch of other stuff at... There's a lot of Bojack and Todd. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Some Bojack and Mr. Peanut Butter, too. Okay, yeah, I mean, hey, hey. Archive is heavily favors male male ships, right? So this is an unsurprising. But um, there you go. Uh, find all that over com. Thank you guys very much for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. Adios. Bye.